my guests. Come on, y'all sing it. Glad you came. Are you looking for something meaningful and life-changing to help you move through the challenges of life? For the next 25 minutes, then, join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. This is Faith Month, Faith Month, and already God has been doing some spectacular things. It's a matter of trusting in God. Now, when we talk about have faith, the, the record says a moment ago, have faith in God. You see, sometimes we uh, have faith in faith, but we got to recognize that, that there is an object that we're supposed to have faith in, and that's God. There was a man that fell over a cliff. You may have read about it, and uh, he was... He was, he just, uh, I don't believe it was an accident, coincidence, that he was able to grab a hold of some sort of a limb uh, that was growing out of the side of the cliff. And it was a great drop down there. And, and uh, he was hanging on. He was by himself and he was screaming for mercy and, and help. And, and he just kept crying out for help. And, and uh, finally he heard a voice and, and said, hey, and, and the man said, hey, I need help down here. I'm, a, I'm about to fall. I need somebody. And, and uh, it was the voice of God. It was the voice of God. God saw him in his situation. God saw him in his circumstance. Uh, how many of you know that God sees you in your circumstance? How many of you know that God is not surprised by what you are going through, that even if you're just hanging on right now? And, and so God said, God said, God said, let go. Obviously, when God tells you to let go, he already has a plan. When God told him to let go, he already knew how he was going to rescue him. And, and the man got quiet. The man got quiet. And, and, and the voice of God said, hey, are you still down there? And, and the man said, yes. He, he, he said, I told you to let go. And the man said, is there anybody else up there? you got to understand that sometimes God gives us a command. God gives us an instruction. God knows what he's going to do. But sometimes we allow fear, hesitation, and all kinds of other things to cause us, rather than letting go and letting God, we would rather hang on and try to cry out for some other help. But is there anybody who can testify this morning? There is no other way that you're going to make it without him. Now, now, uh, when you think about faith, sometimes we question ourselves as to uh, how much faith we have. Can I tell us this morning that you don't have to try to get faith? You don't have to. In other words, we need more faith. We say we need more faith. We need to increase our faith. We got to get more faith. But you don't have to try to get more faith in terms of a struggle, in terms of a wrestling, in terms of your effort. You, you, you don't have to fight. At, to get faith. How many believe that this morning? It's simple. All you got to do is get word and you get faith. I don't have anybody. See, see, uh, the Bible says in Romans 10 and 17, so then uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't have to fight I don't have to just struggle for faith. I, I don't have to wrestle against anybody else's faith. All I've got to do is get word. And the more word I get, the more faith I receive. It's simple. The word, you see, is the container that holds faith. All right? The word of God is like a, a, a basket or a can. All right? When, when, when you get the can. If you go grocery shopping and, and uh, you go through and you're looking for some canned vegetables or some canned peaches or something, um, and, and you reach up on the shelf and you pull down a can of corn, you pull down uh, a can of peaches, uh, that you don't, you don't have to struggle and wonder and fight for because when you got the can, you got 
what was in the can. You got, and you took it home. It was yours. It was, it belonged to you. And that's what faith is. Uh, faith, the word is uh, uh, like a container that holds faith. All right? Are we together? So, so when you receive the word, you get faith. Now, you get the word, and, and by all means, at all times, we, we must grasp this revelation because the devil already knows that when you get word, you get faith. He already understands it, sometimes more so than we understand it, that when you get the word, the word of God uh, is a carrier of faith. And the more words you get, the more faith you receive. He knows that. How do you know he knows it? That's the reason he does everything in his power to cause distractions uh, from your receiving more of the word. He wants to throw up everything. He wants to trip you up because he knows that if, if they mess around and keep getting word and get word and get word, they're getting faith and getting faith and getting faith. And so he will use distractions. He will use all kinds of circumstances and situations. Turn over to Matthew chapter number 13. See, sometimes we're walking around and we have more power than we recognize and the enemy doesn't want you to function in the power that you have, in the faith that you have. And so that's why you got to use every opportunity available to get word. Get you a word, get you a word, and when you get word, the more words you get, the more faith you receive. Matthew chapter 13, are you there? All right. This is the explanation of the parable about the sower where uh, earlier Jesus uh, in the, the beginning uh, of that chapter he talked about how a man went out and he sowed seeds and, and how some of the seeds fell on the wayside and some uh, fell on the stony places and, and then there were others that sprang up and uh, some fell in the thorns. And then he said some fell in the good ground. So in verse 18, he explains what he was talking about. This is Jesus. He says, uh, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is why, this is he who receives seed by the wayside. And sometimes you got to recognize that when you receive the word of God, when you read the word of God, you need to pray and open up your heart to receive the word because sometimes the word falls on a hard place, the wayside, a tough place, and, and you don't allow it to penetrate. And the bird, the enemy comes by and he will steal the word that you had. All right, and then uh, he says in verse 20, but he who received the seed on stony places, um, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now, did you hear that? That when persecution, all right, and tribulation arises because of what? The word. Now, did you get that? That when you receive the word of God, the more of the word you receive, the more the enemy is going to strive and struggle against you. He says that these things come uh, because of the word. And if you don't allow uh, the word to take root in your heart and grow and develop, he says that immediately he begins to stumble. And then he said, now he who receives seed among the thorns uh, is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. So you got to be careful that whenever you receive the word that you don't allow what life around you to choke the word out of you because then you cannot bear fruit. And then finally in verse 23 he said, but he who receives seed on the good ground. Somebody say, I'm good ground. Is he who hears the word understands it who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold some 60 and some 30 and so it's important that you get the word because the word of God is the container for faith 
All right? Now, we talked about it. One of the sisters said uh, in Bible study on uh, Wednesday night that um, don't take it for granted. Don't take it lightly that just because you have uh, the previous word, don't be satisfied uh, because you have read before, you've received before. You got to get the word into you every day on a regular basis. You got to continue to receive the word. You can't go. Listen, how many of you know yesterday's grace is gone? Yesterday's anointing is gone. Come on, I need today's mercy. I need today's blessing. I need today's favor. And sometimes because we have, we used to be those who studied the word. We used to be those that read the word. We just assume just because I have it. But no, you got to keep speaking it. You got to keep reading it. You got to keep receiving the word of God. And so the enemy wants to uh, distract you. That's why uh, whenever it's time for you to, to, to begin to read in your personal time or whenever it's time for you to come to hear a word uh, that everything in the world tries to get in the way. Do I have any witnesses? You decide, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend a little time more uh, in the word and, and I'm going to set aside some time. And I guarantee you that the very time that you try to set aside, uh, that the enemy will throw something, uh, something will happen, something will distract you. You get tired or, or you have a situation in your life or you get frustrated or aggravated. And before you know it, you have put the word aside. You can get in your car and say, you know what, I'm going to just get, listen to some word. I'm going to get one of the bishop's CDs and put in my uh, CD player and ride to work and so I can let that word continue to penetrate. And before you know it, you've jumped over there to uh, Steve Harvey in the morning or you've jumped over there to old school blue soul. You know, but, but, but let me tell you something. If, if, you're going to, if your faith is going to increase... It's not going to increase on Steve Harvey. Come on, somebody. It's not going to increase on Jerry Springer. Come on, somebody. It's going to increase because you are receiving the word, which is the container of faith. If you don't ever receive the word, your faith cannot grow. I don't have anybody. And, and now, one of the challenges I see for God's people is that we experience faith that, that uh, got us to a certain point, and then we become complacent, all right? There was a time that you had intense faith. You were believing and agreeing for God to work out some things, to open some doors. God opened the doors. He worked it out, and what used to be faith is now sight, all right? Because when you obtain it, it is no longer faith. It's faith as you're hoping for it. But whenever you see the manifestation of it, it's now sight. And some of us have gotten to the place where we have encountered sight and we've let faith go. We, we've become complacent. And you then think, well, my God, why in the world do I need uh, faith anyway? Well, the purpose of faith is for us to be able to do and be what God says. Remember now, we're in this earth because God created us. God has purpose for us. God has a plan for us. And we need faith in order to carry out what God's plan is for our life. We need faith to move mountains for the kingdom. Isn't that right? Now, now, now uh, something that I noticed that, that uh, our faith is not just for our personal accomplishments. See? Sometimes we think faith is for me to just to get my next whatever. God, I'm having faith. I'm believing God. He's going to work this out. That I'm going to get my this. I'm going to get my that. I want this. I want that. And we have our laundry list of what we want God to do. And we think that's why we get faith. That's a part of why we get faith. But, but that's really secondary. You got to examine. You got to examine the direct object of your faith. And see if it is focused on kingdom efforts or not. That's what our faith is really for. Our faith is not just for me to get the next biggest whatever. Our faith is just not for me to be able to get uh, the next greatest job and promotion. Our faith is just not for me, Lord, I want you to let me go on a vacation. Our faith is not. Our faith ought to be focused on kingdom efforts. God, I wonder, uh, check out what you have been praying about. 
and believe in God for where you've been extending your faith and see if it's just personal and self-centered or not. Realistically, our faith ought to be so that, God, you can use us to do global and major things to make a difference in the culture. Use us, God. Use the miraculous. Open doors for us, not just for me, but for you to be able to use me to your glory to be a blessing to somebody else. I can't get anybody. You know, when we get that raise, when we get that new job, when, when that door is open, how many times do we use that to be a blessing for the kingdom and to somebody else? Come on, somebody. What's the direct object of your faith? Faith is for God to work through us to influence the culture. Now, listen, if you're not believing God for something right now, I want to tell you, you better pinch yourself because you're either dead or you're badly unfocused. That's why I say you ought to be believing God for something right now. If you're not believing God for something right now, something's wrong with you. You're unfocused. You've lost your focus. You've lost your purpose because God always puts something in our heart and spirit for us to do. He always gives us an assignment, and we ought to be praying and believing God to accomplish the assignment that God has given us. And if you don't know uh, your next assignment, if you don't know what God wants to use you for in this world, it's time for you to go back and say, God, I'm here, and I'm not just a spectator, but I'm a participator. I know I've got purpose in the earth. I know you want to use me to your glory. What is my assignment? And I need faith for that assignment. Now listen, Romans, Romans 12 and 3. Romans 12 and 3 says this. For I say, through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith, or the measure of faith. In other words, everybody who's saved has been given the measure of faith. What do you mean? It is the specific needed amount to begin a relationship and an experience with God. Everybody has been given the measure. There's the amount of faith that God has placed that at a given point can draw one to Jesus Christ. And when you accept Jesus Christ, we all start at the same place. We all start with the measure of faith. Everybody has the same beginning point. But we should never allow our faith to stop increasing. Isn't that right? Listen, everybody at birth, all of us were given the same number of muscles at birth, right? Over 600 or so muscles. And then, you know, you got smooth muscles that, that kind of work involuntarily behind the scenes. And then you got... Uh, skeletal muscles. All of us have been given deltoids and, and pectorals and biceps and quadriceps and, and uh, abs. We all have been given the same. Come on now. When God birthed you, you had the same muscles. Come on, brothers. When you were born, you had the same Number of muscles as the rock. Y'all know the rock? Huh? Yeah, that, you got the same muscles as Arnold Schwarzenegger. You, you got the same muscles, right? He didn't, he didn't give Arnold Schwarzenegger some muscles that he didn't give you. He didn't give the rock some muscles that he didn't give you. God... God is no respecter of persons. He, he said, I'm going to give all of them the same muscles. Where the, where the, where the, the, the abs? Huh? Huh? Everybody's got abs. Huh? Some of, some of our abs are in storage. <laughs> Deep in storage. <laughs> 
We've got the same amount of muscles. The issue is the development of the muscles, all right? Through right diet, right training, exercising, and so forth, so that the muscles can grow and develop. Huh? I got the same muscles as the rest of those in Planet Fitness. I was just a little in a frustrated state, you know, when I was going it. Run into some of my members and they standing back looking like, you know, Atlas or somebody. And I said, you know what? Let, let me go study. Let, let me just let me go study. <laughs> let me go study. I tried to get one of my members, I said, I know you've been taking some of them them drugs. Give me some of them drugs. You ain't you ain't sweating up like that. Give me some of them drugs. What y'all use? <laughs> but none of them stare. Give me some of them. Come on, man. I, I won't say anything. Come on, just give me one shot so I can. <clears throat> huh? But you see, but see, you, you, they were doing the right thing and eating the right thing and, 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 and giving the muscle what it needs and, and working the muscle and being consistent and being uh, uh, disciplined and so forth. So can you see faith as a muscle? Huh? So, so, so the reality is that we have all been given the measure of faith. The same thing. Look at your neighbor and say, but the same faith you've been given, I've been given. It's a matter of working it now. It's a matter of working it. It's a matter of developing it. That's the difference. And so, as I read to you earlier, Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing. Now, you got to notice something here. I want you to really uh, pay attention. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes. But faith does not operate by hearing. Look at the Bible. Faith comes by hearing. But faith doesn't operate by hearing. All right? I told you that. The word is a container for faith because in the word there is faith. So when you get word, you get faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So faith does not operate by hearing though. Faith operates or is released by speaking and acting on the word. All right, all right? So, so, so you got to realize then that it's not enough just to let faith come. Faith comes. Every time I get word, the word of God, faith comes. But, but faith does not operate by hearing. Faith operates or is released by speaking and acting. So when you hear the word, faith comes into your heart. But to receive from that faith, you've got to release it. Come on, somebody. See, you can have money in your pocket, and you believe that it has value, it has worth, and that it can bring some things into your life, right? But let me tell you something. You can stand at the front of the cashier, and your buggy can be loaded down, and you can look at her, and you can, and she'll look back at you, and you look back at her. You got a buggy. I know I want this stuff. I know I need this stuff, and I know I've got money in my pocket to get it, but I'm just standing here looking at her. I got the money in my pocket. I got, I got the right denominations. I got fives. I got some tens, and I got some twenties. I've got some hundreds. And I know that, that this money will purchase some things that I need. I know this will bring some blessing into my life. But right now, I just have it in my pocket. I'm looking at the cashier, and she's looking back at me. And how many of you know that you can do that all day long? You can stand there believing in the money. You know the amount. You know the potential that it has. And you can know the various denominations of it. The cashier will uh, look at you, and after a while, she going to say, you know what? 
can you step aside? Can I help somebody else? Because you're standing there and you got the money in your pocket. You know how much it is. You know the value of it. You believe in it. You have received it, but you have not released it. You can stand there until the store closes, until they ask you, sir, you got to leave these premises. You can stand there all day long believing you got it in your pocket, but until you release it, you cannot receive it. I wish I had somebody who would get the revelation that yes, faith comes uh, by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but you cannot receive by just believing. You got to know that there's some other steps to it because I can believe all day long and if I believe and it does not move me to act, then maybe I don't really believe. I don't have anybody. Huh? And and so you got to understand then that uh, that uh, the way that, that you get what you believe out of your heart and into action is by speaking it and saying it. Tell your neighbor, you got to say something. Uh, tell the other neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to say something. Huh? See, there are times when we should be talking, and there are times when we ought to be quiet. Isn't that right? We need to know what to say when it's time to say something. Sometimes we just need to be quiet. But when it's time to talk, we need to know what to say. I can't get anybody. Let's go back over to that opening text. Mark chapter number 11. I want to show you. You know how your grandparents used to say, you know, you, you just need to hush your mouth. You need to go somewhere and hush your mouth. Your, very, your mouth is going to be your very ruination. <laughs> ruination. I mean, somebody look that up for me. <laughs> your mouth is going to get you in trouble. It, how many can declare, my, it, yeah, my, I, my mouth has gotten me in trouble before? Lord have mercy. And, and, and your mouth, saying the wrong thing, speaking the wrong thing can get you into trouble. And speaking the wrong thing can block your blessing. Oh, come on, somebody. Speaking the wrong thing. So you got to know what to release when it's time to open up your mouth. And, and so Mark again says in the 11th chapter, Jesus answered and said then, have faith in God for assuredly, verse 23, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Can I get somebody? If you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Or you can just visit us online at www.friendshipgastonia.com. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.